Hey everybody, it's me, Frank Fry, the Gaming Geezer. Ah, gotta get these things off. Coming to you live and direct from Gainesville, Florida. Of course, it's really pleasant outside, but that's enough of that. What I want to talk about today is that, in effect, in effect, it is a video response to one of Rune Slinger's very excellent videos. The closest he's ever come that I've ever seen to a rant about trying new things. Well, what I would like to do is, first of all, get into one of the aspects of why are a lot of gamers sort of stuck on one game and they don't want to try anything else, and then flip that around, and how would you get people interested in a new game, and some of the things that I've used. So first of all, we're going to start with why is it that so many gamers are going, yeah, well, I don't, Numenera, I'm not interested. Uh, Call of Cthulhu, no, we've been playing D&D &D 3.5 for the last 15, 20 years, and that's all we want to play. Hmm, okay. Kind of limiting, but when you look at it, and you, you, you look at it, a couple of things pop out. First of all, take a look at the people making this statement. Now, a lot of those folks have jobs. They have families they have to support. Uh, they've got, jo well, like I said, jobs, work, work stress. You know, and God knows I've had it. Um, when you come home, you don't really want to, Get yourself another stressful situation, i.e., learning a new set of RPG rules. You just want to kick back, relax. And if you're playing with your friends, you want something that you all know and you're all familiar with, so you could just unwind. Okay? I know that feeling. I know it well. Rune Slinger, I think, um, really. He has a lot of very valid points, but I would kind of like to counter them with a lot of people do not have the inclination because of outside pressures and stresses. They want their relaxation. They want it. That's how they want it. Nothing due to disturb it. And to me, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. A corollary to this is if you have looked at the price of RPG books these days, yeah, they're pretty expensive. At least more expensive than they used to be, way a lot more expensive. Uh, I believe the new D&D 5th edition, because I don't have it right here, is going for something like $50. All three books, $50 a shot. That's a $150 investment. So really all you need is the player's handbook. Keep it so. That's $50. That's taking your wife out to dinner and a movie. That's buying something for your kids. That's a number of things. That if you've got other obligations than gaming, you're going to have to sit back and go, wait a minute. Uh, I've got all of this. Ta -da! What do I need that for? And that's, a very, again, a very valid outlook. It's an outlook of practicality. And I'll tell you, I do the same thing. Uh, a lot of times I'll look at a new system and I go, okay, what does this system do for me that I can't do with something I've already got? Well, now I've kind of reached a point where I actually like collecting games as much as playing them. There are some that have sat here on my shelf. Uh, for a while. I've never played them, but I enjoy reading them. So, you know, that's one thing. That's, you know, that's a couple of things that you have to really consider. At least I think so. People do not have, well, with the economy being as it is today, the time and or the money to try new things. So how do you get them to try new things? Okay, 
here's some of the things that I have done. One of the things I've done a lot of is I've run games at conventions. And a lot of people will actually go to conventions to try new games. And one of the things that most conventions, worth their salt, are going to tell you is you have to bring pre gen characters. And that's fine. I think that's a very good idea because, first of all, you're getting maybe a four, uh, four-hour slot. If you're lucky, you get a six-hour. Gen Con, you get a six-hour slot, which gives you, in my opinion, plenty of time to tell the story, et cetera, et cetera, you know, and all that. Uh, most conventions, though, you get a four-hour slot. Now, this also applies to, you know, miniatures battles as well. And that's a whole other video or blog entry. Okay, so you bring the pre-gen characters. You bring all you're going to need, the maps. Uh, you bring everything. It's ready to go. So all the people have to do is sit down and play. That's it. Does this work outside of a convention? I would say it would if you're trying to get people interested in a new game, even privately. Just think of this as a game demo. For example, let us say, well, I'll give you a real life example of how this can work and what happens when you're not prepared. I believe it was Gen Con 2012, I believe, where I ran a Call of Cthulhu World War II scenario, Jump Into Darkness. And everything was ready, thanks to the Metacritic, uh, Metacritic, listen to me, Metacreator, character generation software, I generated 14 characters. Took me all of two days. And that's because I was just moving at my pace. Now, I also had things like, this is what your gun looks like. You know, this is the weapon you're carrying. You know, this is this, that, and the other. I even Xeroxed pages out of one of my Osprey books on the U.S. Army Airborne. This is what you look like. Everything I could think of to visually draw the people into the setting. Now, a number of them were Call of Cthulhu veterans. And they all, and I am very proud and happy to say, enjoyed the game immensely. They really did, and I got the biggest kick out of running it. So, and my friend Scott Glancy ran another table using the same scenario. They had a ball, and it turned out rather differently than mine did, and that just goes to show you how wonderful, you know, how, how incredible it is, you know, how, how much fun it is because you never know what you're going to get as a game master. But anyway, the idea is they could sit down, they could pick up, you know, the paperwork. Oh, this is what we are. And then I tied it in with, you guys ever seen Band of Brothers? Everybody at the table raised their hand. I said, yeah, that's who you are. And they're going, okay, click, get locked in. I did the same thing a number of years ago for a 2300 adventure, that's a science fiction RPG uh, from GDW originally. First thing out of, I said, because I had the characters already pre gent I said, your uh, NASA astronauts in the year 2300, NASA in this case be standing for North American Space Agency, and you also have some Russian Federation cosmonauts and some Australians as part of your team. And you're aboard the Starship Discovery. Bang! Everybody got into it. And that's what's important. You draw them in because they had this. They, one guy actually took out his NASA ball cap. He worked for NASA. Uh, a woman who had bought one of the Sergei Leonov patches you know, from the movie 2010. Uh, took it out, pinned it to her vest, and said, yeah, Don, because she was completely a, a Russian cosmonaut. People got into it because there was a hook that brought them in. 
And it could be genre TV shows or, you know, movies uh, can be great for that. Because you could say, we're, you know, we're playing Buffy the Vampire Slayer. You know, this, you know, and then fill out what you're doing. Say, here, here. Most people are going to know that. Or Firefly, the same thing. You connect, and this is the best way to introduce new people to a game, or people to a new game. By the way, for that Call of Cthulhu, um, I heard a real horror story from a half a dozen, I think it was a good three or four of the players. They actually talked about a Pathfinder session they had just been through. Mind you, now, this is not a knock on Pathfinder at all. I have a number of friends who play it and enjoy it. And, but the hey, you know, I've tried it once, kind of like not my thing, but hey, you know, it's still a very good game and extremely well supported. And if you're interested, go for it. But they said that the first hour of that gaming session, they had to make up characters. My reaction was, what? They didn't come with pre -gens? Nope. And then the guy wasn't really sure what to do. Oh boy, this is already sounding, this already has the screeching crash of a train wreck. Which apparently, according to these gentlemen, it was. And they were really, they really liked it. Oh look, we've got characters, we've got this, we've got that. Okay, so how do you do this? Simple. If you want to introduce a new game to your gaming group, have a demo. Treat it like a demo. Have pre-generated characters. Use one of the adventures the company puts out. You know, uh, Numenera has some excellent beginner adventures. Uh, Pathfinder. You know, they all have pre-generated characters. And all of Hollow Earth Expedition has some great adventures. There you go. Then you, after that, and you, they're really getting you. You say, "Well, going to create your own character." A lot of them will go, "Well, yeah." Or if, to me anyway, they're pre-gens I generated, I generally go, "Or you can keep the pre-gen, and we'll go from there." Okay. Now, excuse me. Another corollary to this is that if you're going to do a campaign, you really need, almost like a demo, write it up. Where is it set? What rules does it use? Etc., etc. And probably one of the most singly, single important facets of it is a classic. These are the kind of characters that would probably do very well here. Or these are the kind of characters, you know, I'm looking for. Now, this doesn't mean you've got to tell your players, hey, you've got to play these types of characters. No, not at all, as far as I'm concerned. But rather, and instead, you are actually giving them an idea of what's going to work best. And then turning them loose on it. One of the most important things is a character generation session. I know a lot of people are going, yeah, well, that takes time, and that's some time I'm not. True. You can do this one or two ways. Either have it an hour or so before your regular starting time, or have it as a whole session, even if it's abbreviated. Then when they come back, they've got their characters. Work with them. Security, like they'll probably like that new game a hell of a lot better if they're playing characters that they like and feel comfortable with. And the whole thing comes down to the C word, communication. It goes two ways, and you all, as game masters and players, you need to work that communication. You need to understand what's going on, you know, in terms of what the game master expects, be sure your players know what you expect. And I guarantee you, you're going to get people wanting to play something new. Anyway, this is the Gaming Geezer from sunny Florida.
telling you all, have fun, Plaguey!